Today, I'm gonna to show you how to make a carbonated blueberry mead at home. Let's get started. All right, so if you clicked on this video, you saw blueberry and you were like, oh yeah, I'm excited. And you should be, because blueberries are awesome. It's a great fruit. They are perfect for smoothies, for drinks, for desserts, for everything. It's a well, used fruit in our world. Today's recipe is pretty simple. Everyone here watching this is probably a home brewer. I'm gonna teach you how to do this in a bottle carbonated method and then also a kegged method. Now, I'll just go and tell you, mine is in a kegged form. They're gonna be a little bit different. I'll put up the recipes for both of them on the screen. You can see them and follow them, but the processes are a little different. So just know that. First, let's talk about the blueberries. You can source them from anywhere. If you have local blueberries to you, go ahead and get those. Uh, if you need to do frozen blueberries, that's also totally fine. Um, I would stray away from flavorings in this case. I would just try and go true blueberries if I'm making this brew. Once you have sourced your blueberries and tasted them generally, you wanna go ahead and take and put them in a bucket and add a magical thing called pectic enzyme. Pectic enzyme is essentially a way to get more juice out of those blueberries. So what I did, the first start for this brew is to get a bucket of sorts, and I put all my frozen blueberries, in this case, in, and I actually just put some pectic enzyme on top. The pectic enzyme breaks down the fruit skins, which releases more fruit juice from those blueberries, which is really nice and very helpful in this case. You let those set for roughly 24, 48 hours, I would say, and then you're ready to go ahead and start mixing up everything. So this recipe calls for about two pounds of blueberries per gallon, and I could, I, and I would say you could maybe go less if you wanted a lighter blueberry taste or heavier if you want it to just be a blueberry, you know, smash in your face. Two pounds is pretty even, pretty good in my opinion. After we've let our fruit set for two days, we are going to now go ahead and start mixing up our honey and our water in this case. I just so happen to love the Lauben 71B for specifically blueberry or berry based meads. So today we're using the Lauben 71B. There are a lot of other great yeast that go well with berries and dark fruits. I just had this one and it works well. So here's some options if you don't have that. We start mixing together our honey and our water and our blueberries. So specifically, we started with we started with five pounds of clover honey and then water up to the four gallon mark. I'm using clover here because I want light and that will help it be more crisp. A dark sort of warm honey in that way might not be as um, nice for this recipe in my opinion. So clover, light wildflower, orange blossom, anything like that would go well. We of course then add our blueberries that have been setting for a while into that bucket. I so happen to use this um, basically drill attachment and it just kind of blends up everything there and mixes up the honey and the water and all that stuff. We mixed it really well. We then went ahead and took a gravity reading. Our starting gravity was 1.056. So we're looking at somewhere around a 7%-ish brew, assuming that it ferments completely dry and it will. We then add our yeast in this case, and we are going to add some yeast nutrient at the 24 hour mark. I am using Fermade O, which is an organic yeast nutrient. Yeast nutrients are really important for this kind of brew and really all meads because yeast need nutrition to ferment properly and well. After everything's combined, we put a lid on, write down our information, starting gravity, when we start primary, and we let it start fermenting. This one moves pretty fast. It was done fermenting in about two weeks, and that's including all of our blueberries and stuff in there. I did go ahead and at that 24 hour mark, like I said, add my Fermade O to that bucket to give it yeast nutrition. And uh, about every two days, I'll, I would go ahead and mix the blueberries on top. I did this because I wanted to keep them submerged. It also just really helped to uh, not have any problems with mold, even though there really wouldn't be. Um, I just wanted to play it safe. About two weeks later, we saw it was done fermenting. We went ahead and racked it off of the blueberries, off of all the sediment and stuff into a new container. 
So now we have probably about three and a half gallons of liquid, I would say roughly. So this is the crossroads zone for if you want to bottle carbonate or if you want to keg this brew. I'm going to go ahead and talk about the bottle carbonation method and kind of explain it to you. I don't have video of me doing it, but it's a decent easy process. If you want to bottle carbonate this, you're just going to move it into a new container and there will still be some active yeast in that brew and that's okay. You'll need them. You're more than likely going to want to have this brew be a little sweeter. So the bottle carbonation method requires you to actually use non-fermentable sugar. So erythritol, stevia, xylitol, anything that's a non-fermentable sugar to back sweeten that brew. You can add however much you want. Then you're gonna go ahead and take and put some priming sugar in. That could be sucrose, it could be honey, it could be any other fermentable sugar to the brew. And then you'll bottle all of that brew into bottles and it will start to bottle carbonate. What's important here is that you use a priming sugar calculator and I'll put one down in the description. Essentially it tells you how much priming sugar to use so you don't create a problem. Too much priming sugar in this circumstance will lead to a <laughs> bottle bomb and that's not fun. The non-fermentable sugar will not be consumed so you'll have sweetness from there and you will have then of course your priming sugar. The yeast will eat the priming sugar creating bottle carbonation and in about two weeks time after you've left them in a room temp situation, two to three weeks, you'll have yourself a carbonated blueberry mead. That method works well, I've done it before. Um, I prefer the kegged method, so that's what we're gonna talk about now. The kegging version is also pretty simple. Um, it's a lot more, you have a lot more control of the brew when you keg it in this case. We're gonna move that mead into a new container and stabilize it. You can stabilize via multiple methods. You can pasteurize your brew, which means you kind of heat the liquid up and it kills the yeast off. You can use potassium sorbate, metabisulfite, which are two great things to halt fermentation or further fermentation, I should say. There's a couple methods there. You're gonna halt any further fermentation. I used potassium sorbate and metabisulfite. This will allow you to use a fermentable sugar to back sweeten. And honey, of course, is fermentable. The nice thing about using honey in this recipe is you have a rich blueberry character and you can add more of that honey character that has been fermented on. So that's what I did. I went ahead and back sweetened with some honey, basically, in that container. I had to wait about 24 hours after I used those stabilizers because they need to go into action, essentially. And I added my honey. I nicely mixed that in. Um, I actually did it in the keg because it's just easier. And I put all of that to the keg and we force carbonated the brew. Now I also added some extra stuff right before I closed the keg and all that. I added some citric acid that helps to add some pop to this brew. You can also add citric acid to the bottle carb version if you want to do that. But citric acid is very helpful in this case. It just adds a little zing, which is nice. You have sweetness, you got blueberry, you got the zing from the citric acid and carbonation. Uh, before some of you click off the video and go, I can't make this, I can't keg. Wait a minute. There's a way to do this. It, it is a one gallon mini keg. So this is a smaller way to do this. You don't have to have the full kegging operation. Um, you can buy these kegs on Amazon, brew shop, all of the, that stuff. They use a CO2 cartridge, so you don't have to have a bunch of crazy setup. You put the CO2 cartridge on, put your brew in, you turn it up to roughly about 30 PSI for about two days and two to three days, roughly and you'll have yourself a carbonated mead. They do use the CO2 cartridges. I have a whole video on four different kegs. I have a favorite keg um, out of all the ones I tried. I'll link to that video as well, but this is a way to keg without having the full five gallon keg operation with CO2 tanks and all that. It's a bit more of a budget situation. We have explained this brew. We're gonna taste a kegged version of it today, not a bottle carbonated, and that's okay. So I was going to do a bottle carb version for an example. This is about a third of a gallon of the original. Not stabilized, I just kind of let it set too long and because of some oxygen and stuff like that, it went bad. Essentially, I could have done my process, non-fermentable sugar, priming sugar, bottle into bottles that can handle pressure. Would have an example, but I didn't, so sorry. What does this taste like? Mmm, it is a crisp, blueberry, I mean, it's, it's biting into a, a, a 
sweet blueberry with this nice like honey. Recently I've been getting into acai bowls, which are generally fruited uh, smoothie bowls essentially. And a lot of them have honey with them. This kind of has that vibe. Like I said, six and a half, seven percent. Just a crushable, crushable brew. I love this thing because that citric acid really adds some pop, makes you want to drink even more. The blueberry is sweet, the sweetness level is nice. You do want to take gravity readings all the way throughout your process, from the moment you start it to it finishes primary to adding your back sweetening sugar. It is just a clean, clean brew. And that 71B is a fantastic yeast. So you might have a little varied result when it comes to the bottle carbonated version, and that's because non-fermentable sugar does not taste like honey. I mean, that's just the truth of it. It's not intended to be. So you're gonna have a little bit more of a, I don't wanna say fake sugar side, but it will be noticeable. It will still do the job. You'll still get blueberry. The honey character will be there. It's just not gonna be sweetness from honey. So that's a trade-off. This brew is really fun to make. And I have a bunch of staples at my house of things that I keep in kegs all the time. Due to the fact that this is so stinking easy to make, I'm gonna be basically making it all the time and having it on tap at my house. It's a pretty quick process. Two to four weeks, I would say, for fermentation, if you have a long fermentation. And you know, some time to bottle carbonate if you're doing that. Kegging is pretty quick turnaround. You could have this brew done in probably six weeks, I would say. That's a pretty nice. It is low ABV. If you want to go higher ABV, you can do that. You don't even have to do a carbonated version. You could do a non-carbonated and just skip all of that process and just have a blueberry mead. It's the same idea. The only difference is you don't, don't carbonate it. So I've done a hopped blueberry mead before and followed the process that I mentioned. I'll link that video too. Um, that was using a non-fermentable sugar and that kind of process. This to me is more clean and much nicer. And I don't want to alienate you if you are someone who can't keg. You do have options if you want to keg and you can't do the big thing. So feel free to check that out. In fact, um, I don't know when this is video is going live, but um, I've been, I have given away or I am planning to give away two one gallon kegs. I've already given away one of them. This is the other one that's gonna be given away. There's a video for that. Lots of links below. If you enjoy the channel, feel free to hit like, subscribe. I love making content and I love seeing the stuff you guys are making. So I hope to see you down in the comments talking about stuff you're doing, maybe in my Discord or any other social media world. And uh, yeah, hit like, subscribe for more content. And see you next time. Cheers.